Building the DB Sport and Scale SE5A. Week 1. In 1982, I visited the RC Club where I am actually living now, and there I saw a model of the SE5A being flown. Since then, this aeroplane has fascinated me, and I have long wanted to build it. Some months ago, I discovered that a manufacturer in England, DB Sport and Scale, does a quarter scale kit. I ordered one from them, and also all the extra bits not included in the kit. This video is a slideshow of some pictures I took while building it with a voiceover. Usually, when I start a scale model, I have already chosen a prototype. This is also the case now. The plane I am going to do is the B4863, flown by Major James T.B. McCudden, uh, with 56th Squadron Royal Flying Corps. It's also a plus that this plane was marked with a huge G on the fuselage side and on top of the upper wing. Day 1. At the beginning of April, I got a message from the post office. The model was here, and I could go and pick it up. The box was crammed full of nicely laser-cut wood and large baggies full of all kinds of extra stuff needed for the build. They also had managed to fit all the extra stuff into the box, thereby reducing the price of postage and packaging. The only niggle I had about the kit was that the Vickers machine gun I had ordered came with two right side. I contacted Richard Bristow of DB Sport and Scale, and the left-hand side was in the mail ASAP. I took the box to my workshop and started looking at the instructions. The first thing you do is make up the four wing tips from three bits of balsa. Next, they tell you to start with the ailerons. This is not the beginning I'm used to, but I decided they should know best, so I did as I was told. I dug out most of the bits that make up the ailerons and tried dry-fitting them together. Most of them fit perfectly, but some I had to file a little to make them fit. One thing became extremely obvious. This is not a kit for beginners, and I really need to follow the instructions. And so, I grabbed the wood glue and started on the first aileron. After a good hour, the first aileron was nearly finished. Now, I just have to make three more, and I better be awake while doing so, because I must make two left ones and two right. It is easy to go wrong. Day two. I made four ailerons this morning. I had finished two for the left wing and was in the process of making a third when I stopped myself and changed it into a right-hand side aileron. Now I just have to sand them to shape and insert the horns. Those decide upper and lower positions. Day 3. I started the morning by sanding one of the ailerons, just to see how long it would take me. All in all, it took me about 20 minutes to do this one aileron. The others will come later. I have to add that I do not find sanding tedious, especially when I have something rough that the sandpaper can make smooth and beautiful. It also helps when you have a laser cut things to sand. When, when the suit is gone, the sanding is usually done. Next, the instructions tell you to assemble the, the wings one by one. But first you have to find the parts needed for those wings. I noticed that the numbering system for this model has been thought out by someone really clever. Anything to do with the fuselage is numbered in the 100s. The wings are 200 something and the tail is all 300 something. So I just needed to concentrate on the 200 numbers. Actually, the leading edge is number 200, and most of the ribs are 211. The picture shows 
what I was able to cut out this morning. This took me well over three hours, and I'm not finished. Day 4. This morning I kept sorting the bits needed to build the wings, and there are a lot of them. Among the many parts are the bits needed for the wing holders, which are absolutely unique. You slide the wing up on steel wires which go through steel clips which hold it on. To get the wing off, you push the clip and slide the wing off. This fastening is made up of five plywood pieces which you have to fit together as the laser cuts are not wide enough. After some time, with a small file, I got one together. I did not really want to do more of those today, so I started putting the upper centre section together. It is needed when I build the fuselage anyway. Here it is mostly together. Day 5. The wing holding pins are glued onto the centre section, but first they are wrapped with painter's tape to make them stick better and not come loose. I then glued a large piece of 0.4mm plywood to the bottom and weighted it down so it would not go anywhere while the glue hardens. Day 6. I started the morning with filing together uh, wing fastening lock number 2. There is a lot of work involved in sanding down every slot and pin until everything fits together and can be glued. Just as an example, the steel locking clip is 13mm wide, but the space where it must sit is 12mm wide. The holes through which the piano wire must pass are exactly 4mm, but the piano wire pins are 8G, which is 4.1mm. Then I assembled the gl and glued the first part of the lower wing centre section, a sort of 3D jigsaw puzzle. Day 7. I'm still doing the wing centre sections. Here the lower one is growing. I attached some items to it, like the pins for the wing fastenings, a seat for the aft landing gear wire, and the horns that point backwards beside the fuselage, fuselage sides.